much. I want to talk about all of this now with the chief strategist for the Republican National Committee, Communications Director Sean Spicer. Okay, so I want to ask you about Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. We have these two clear front runners here, um, but what are you hoping to see from them tomorrow night? Well, not just them, but we're going to have 13 candidates take the stage tomorrow night. We're about 45 days out from the first votes being cast in Iowa. And I really hope that there's a robust, substantive discussion that gives some voters uh, a real opportunity to distinguish who they want to support. Uh, but what I hope overall happens is what we've seen in the last few debates is a real level of intensity and enthusiasm for what's happening on our side. You mentioned that there are 13 candidates. So there's actually two debates tomorrow, right? right. You have the undercard debate. Some people have called it the kitty table. Is that going to continue after this debate, do you think? I think every, every debate we have a, an analysis with the, uh, with the network partner, and we look at it right now, considering the number of qualified candidates, uh, it's, it's been an easy decision to maintain that, and we'll continue to make those decisions on a case-by-case -case basis. But so far, when you look at the level of folks that have been on both of those debate stages, it's unprecedented the level of qualifications that they're bringing to the table. The interesting thing is, again, you look at someone like Carly Fiorina or Chris Christie, who's had the opportunity to get out there, get their voice heard, and then pr propel themselves back onto that main stage. That's a real important opportunity for voters to be able to hear. I know that when it comes to the candidates, obviously you're with the RNC, you have to remain unbiased, you can't tip your, put your finger on the scale for any of them, but right now you have Ted Cruz and Donald Trump, and I think both of them really struggle with part of the Republican Party. We've seen this sometimes with other candidates who ultimately do uh, win the nomination. With that in mind, what is the, I guess, what is the strategy of the RNC if you end up with a candidate where you really kind of have to build a coalition around them that maybe wasn't so natural in the primary? Well, the beauty of what happens, and there's a lot of myths, myths about how this place, how we operate. We're very neutral in the process. We are the resource provider. We provide the ground game, the data, and the digital operation, the messaging uh, research, the opposition research. And so what we do despite what a lot of people think we do, is make sure that those resources are built up, that the staff is built out on the ground in battleground states, that the lists are made, et cetera, et cetera, and that whoever that nominee is, that the voters decide. Because that's what this is really all about. Voters will elect delegates. Delegates will elect the, the nominee of our party. And then we will be able to sit there and hitch our wagon to whomever that is and provide them the resources necessary to win in November. Are you confident that Donald Trump will make good on his pledge if, if he is not the nominee to... Uh you know, not run as an independent. Yes. Why? Because I think, look, every because he's been making because, sounds that are no, no, definitely but I, not honestly, as sure honestly, as look, what you're I, I believe a lot of this is media driven. Everyone wants to needle him over and over again. Donald Trump has said when he's been asked point blank, "Do you have a problem with with the with the RNC?" He says, "No, absolutely not. I think Reince has done a great job. I, I think Reince has been over backwards, as we have with all these candidates." I think what he gets upset about is sometimes when the quote unquote establishment, someone who you know was involved in Republican politics ten years ago, takes pot shots at him, which I think a lot of the candidates do. But Donald Trump, Ben Carson are new to the political system. Sometimes there's a hard to distinguish the RNC versus the GOP establishment. But at the end of the day, every single one of those candidates who will take the stage knows tomorrow night that only a unified Republican Party beats Hillary Clinton. But in fairness, Donald Trump tweets out polls about an independent run by himself. No, he tweeted, I mean, he's not, that's not tamping down no, 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 but, speculation. But, right, but when asked about it, he's been very clear about it. Look, your question is, am I confident that he's going to either be the nominee or support the nominee? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, reports at this point in time, and this is the first debate where you've really faced this, talk about whether there's going to be a brokered or a contested convention for Republicans. All of the sort of like minutia of the delegate stuff aside, because right. I've heard you answer this question before, is the RNC prepared for that to happen? Sure. We're prepared for a fire, too. I don't expect there to be a fire. But what we do is, look, we're a, we're a party that's had two hurricanes the last two, two, two conventions. So we take preparation very seriously, as we should. Are we, the only way, though, that we end up in a brokered convention is if the voters elect delegates and, and no candidate receives the 1,237 necessary to, to take the nomination. But it is the voters. You think voters. it's overblown? Yeah, of course it is. It hasn't happened in th almost four decades. So, again, if it happens, it will be up to the voters to make that determination because they won't have given any one candidate the requisite number of delegates to achieve a majority. And if that were to happen, which I believe it's a small, small chance, then we as a party will be prepared for that. We'll be prepared for another hurricane. We'll be prepared. To, I mean, we very will Very Boy Scout of <laughs> That's you. very easy. All right. <laughs> Sean Spicer with the RNC. Thanks so Thanks. much.